understand the need to support artists at the cutting edge and I think that's exemplified by this beautiful exhibition here tonight. This venue is called the Absolute Fringe Fa Factory at Smog Alley <laughs> uh, Theatre um, and uh, over the course of the festival which starts on Saturday and runs until Sunday the 20th of September, this venue will play host to um, performances across all disciplines, uh, 16 different shows and I do hope that you can come and see a show, come and have a drink here at the bar and uh, take this fabulous exhibition in again and I'd like to congratulate all the artists. The Absolute Fringe Factory, this is um, the opening night of Absolute Original at the Absolute Fringe Factory. Uh, all around us are artists' pieces. How many are there, Brendan? There's 16. 16. And you were involved in curating for yeah. this? I'm part of a group called Small Print. Okay. And Small Print, we try to promote creativity in different ways. So we have gallery shows, we work with brands like Absolute and other brands, put on events. Nice. Um, as well as that, we do small rooms, posters, and books and t-shirts. So we like to do lots of different things like that, just to make creativity. Cool, and Eve, if you can get a shot of this, this is your piece. Yeah, for Which is, as you said, amazing what you could do in half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> what was your brief, basically? Basically, it was, it was, depending on who you are, it can be the perfect brief or it can be the worst brief. Right. It was an open brief, it was basically, use the... We do a bit of research into the, the history of Absolute and the connection they have with creativity right. through Warhol on to the early 80s on, and just basically be inspired by the bottle and do whatever you want, okay. within reason. Right. You no, know, it still is a, a corporate, a corporate company, you're not going to have that too bad. My name is Richard Brickley, I'm the marketing manager for Absolute in Irish Distillers and I guess I'm your host for the evening. Um, as you will all know, you've all seen the advertising, you all know that we are the title sponsor to this year's Absolute Fringe Festival. And for decades, Absolute has collaborated with some of the leading creatives across the world to produce some amazing pieces, uh, which are very, very familiar to all of us at this stage. Uh, it all began back in 1985 when Andy Warhol offered to do an ad for uh, a little known vodka brand, I suppose, at that time. Um, and it, the brand was unique in that it had such an unusual uh, shape of bottle. Emma, the last time we saw you was at the uh, the launch of Fringe, and here we are. And here we are, and I, how uh, exciting is At another is Absolute that? event. I know, at the Absolute Original and Absolute Fringe. Um, yep. This is, remember I told you that we had commissioned 16 pieces? Yep. Well, here they are. Yeah. So it is wonderful to see them in person. I love every one of them. I know you're going to ask me which one is my favourite, aren't you? No, because um, I think it's really everyone. walking around. You can't. Yeah, think. absolutely. I think you know. each and every one of them do exactly what Andy Warhol did when he was asked in 1985 to be inspired by the absolute bottle. Yeah. That was the brief that we gave to them, and this is the result. One of the uh, pieces that I was most excited about at this exhibition was by an artist called Asbestos, who's at theartofasbestos.com. You may remember his stickers from loads of places around Dublin and around the world. They're one of those funny things that make a smile. And he's standing beside me and he's wearing a really cool t-shirt. And that's actually all I'm going to show of it. But you've taken, you for your piece, you've gone completely away from the whole street art thing in a way and taken a very classic view of the bottle. Yeah, that's a good way of, yeah, I hadn't thought of it like that actually. Right. But, uh, they asked me to do a screen print and I've been very slow to do screen prints before because my work is kind of, the painterly side of my work is quite painterly and I didn't ever want to do anything that was very graphic. Yeah. Um, but the printers in London were just amazing and able to turn it into something that that felt like a painting, it felt different and then we changed all the colours and every time that uh, the printer put on a new plate, we ran greens and blues and reds and yellows, so every single one is different and then after each, after each layer was laid down, we then put, I then sprayed different colour of paint on and crayons and like wax crayons and pencil, so every print is different. So basically for my piece I just took the, the, the bottle itself, you know, is really cool, sophisticated, the script on it is very decorative and, and classic looking. So I wanted to take that kind of cool uh, palette and the sophistication and kind of turn it right around and do something really expressive and colourful. So all the text on mine is all the text from the actual label as well. I've broken it down into bits and just redrew them and uh, did it all with my hand and coloured it by hand so that it had uh, a one-off original kind of feel. Yeah, it very much does. I can't imagine like anybody being able to even recreate that. 
you know what I mean? Um, so, I mean, that was the basic brief, and we get that to all the artists. Okay. So basically, as, as well as being one of the artists myself, yep. I was, which, I was uh, with Richard uh, Seabrook, my partner. We curated the event and that we did all the admin and, and the facilitation of all the artists, make sure they had all the information they needed. You know, keep the deadlines tight, make sure everyone had all the information they needed, and we got all the framing and we, we hung the show ourselves. So we basically did a lot with that to do with their technicians. We did took it from it just an idea right to the fruition of the event itself. And it's a lovely venue for it. It is a great venue. Really, yeah. really is. You got some brilliant artists who got me, sir. Yeah. Who a lot of people will know from the streets of Dublin. Sure, yeah. Another one is Asbestos, who a lot yeah. of people will know from the streets of Dublin. But then you have like Owen Kidney, who's a classic digital filmmaker. Yeah. Uh, and then photography and illustrators. What, how did you come to pick all of these people? Well, over the last three or four years, myself and Richard, and Asbestos as well, have been working together on various projects. A lot of them have been. Uh, we put on talks where we get international artists as well as homegrown artists to talk with the work on presentations. Right. And, we've, and we've done other projects, gallery shows our, our, ourselves and with Habitat and other people. And we've always, because I'm an illustrator, he, uh, Spestos is a street artist, painter's a graphic designer. And because we're just generally interested in the commercial arts, we have lots of contacts over the years in uh, every area and every field. So we wanted to have a diverse show, so we just picked people that uh, we felt would respond really well to the brief, yeah. but also people that we've worked with before um, that we knew and could trust to do a really good job in a very tight deadline. Because we, there was other artists that we would have probably liked as well, but we, you know, but it's, it's with a really tight deadline, it's very difficult to take chances on things like that. Because someone might do really nice work, but they might take six months to do it. We only see the finished thing. Yeah. We know from working with people in the past that when they do stuff, with them, they can do it really quick, right. and they're professional enough. They know how to work deadlines, and so that's why we chose them. something expressive, something that we put up in an art gallery, something that's not wrapped around a bottle or something that's not wrapped around a cornflakes box, something that's not shown on a screen, something that's in a gallery, people can take time and digest it and give, you know, give it the, the time it needs. Where can people see this? Where is this venue? It's a secret venue. It's a secret venue? Nobody knows where it is. I, we were all blindfolded, as you know, before uh, we got there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just beside the Smock Alley uh, Theatre, yep. which is just uh, beside the civic offices. Uh, a lot of people know the Cultivate Centre yes. at the bottom of Cowes Lane. It's on the... It's on the... the it's on it's the back of that, on the river side of that, beside the Smock Alley Theatre. Another landmark, I guess, would be the Viking ship bus stop. We're yeah. right, right beside that. Okay, Brilliant. and it's open? It's open open from Saturday the 5th of September. It's only open in conjunction with the Fringe Festival, so it's only open from 5 until 10. Right. Because it acts basically as the bar for the Fringe Festival, right. so that's when I'm working. Brilliant. Thanks very much. If people right. want to find out more about you, where can you? Okay. Well, you can go to Always Read the Small Print, which is our blog. Okay. And you can go then to my website, which is friendly.net. Okay. Or you can go to iloveoffset.com, which is the, the website for the conference that we're putting on in November, which is a three-day conference where we're getting 24 of the best international speakers and Irish speakers around the world to come and give presentations about their work in the Liberty Hall. And it's gone for three days, and then for the week leading up to that, we've gallery shows and other events all the way up. So, iloveoffset.com is all the info. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Check your hand out. Thanks a lot.